Structuring Requirements in Requisite Pro When creating requirements in Requisite Pro, we recommend that you create packages within your requirement types to help contain and organize your requirements. A package is a UML term used to group related elements, and in this situation those elements are requirements. On this slide, within the feature requirement type, I've introduced two packages, New Age Media Portal Administrative System and New Age Media Portal System. These two packages help me to group together and organize the common features. By leveraging packages, this will make your requirements more portable, readable, reusable, and easier to work with. We also recommend leveraging hierarchies when creating your requirements. On the left-hand side of this slide, within the Use Cases Requirement Type, I've introduced several packages. I've highlighted two of those packages, Shop for Item and Purchase Item, in orange. Within those packages, I've created hierarchies for my requirements and I've outlined them in red. In the Shop for Item package, I created a parent requirement, UC1, Shop for Item. UC1.1 Brief Description to UC1.11 Post Condition are child requirements of the UC1 Shop for Item. In the Purchase Item package, I created a parent requirement, UC2, Purchase Item. UC2.1 Brief Description to UC2.8 Post Condition are child requirements of the UC2 Purchase Item. On the right-hand side of the slide, I'm demonstrating how one can establish a parent-child relationship between the requirements. In this situation, I'm viewing the properties of UC2.4 Customer Quits Purchasing Items, and I see that its parent is UC2 Purchase Item, and its children are UC2.4.1 Quit Save the Current Order, and UC2.4.2 Quit Do Not Save the Current Order. To wrap up this tip on structuring requirements, I'd like to paraphrase Lewis Sullivan an American architectural giant of the 19th and 20th century, and he said, form follows function. So in structuring your requirements, the form of your requirement should resemble the function of your business. Determining and managing traceability. Requirements will change no matter how carefully we define them. Some requirement changes are actually desirable. It means your team is engaging your stakeholders. Accommodating changing requirements is a measure of your team's sensitivity to stakeholder needs and your team's work flexibility, and these are important team attributes that contribute to successful projects. Oftentimes in our field, we're wary of change, but change is not the real enemy. Unmanaged change is. Managing requirement change includes keeping track of each requirement's history, establishing traceability relationships between related requirements, and maintaining version control. IBM Rational's Requisite Pro traceability feature will help to ensure the quality, and completeness of your solution. Traceability is a bidirectional relationship between any two requirements of the same type or different types. In other words, requirement A can be traced to requirement B, and requirement B can be traced from requirement A. For example, you can trace use case requirements to the feature requirements because use cases depend on the specification of the features. Traceability enables you to understand where the requirement came from, what dependent requirements it may have, and also helps traverse the path of how requirements make its way through to implementation. Requirement traceability allows you to see relationships between requirements, other related development elements, testing, and it facilitates audit compliance, impact analysis, and helps assure completeness. We recommend that you have a plan for traceability before the project starts, but be consistent and be judicious. It should not be taken lightly, but at the same time, overdoing traceability is no better than underdoing it. A cost does exist to maintain and keep things current. However, if you design, implement, and commit to a traceability scheme, you need to adhere to it in order for the traceability to be meaningful. So to wrap up this tip on determining and managing traceability, remember to have a realistic plan for traceability, and just because you can trace something doesn't always translate to you should. Sharing requirements with non-requisite pro users. Before we discuss this tip, I'd like to provide a little background on how requisite pro works. When RecPro saves your Word document files, it actually saves those files with extensions other than a .doc. If it had used the use case template when creating a new project, the default document types and extensions are as follows. Glossary document types are saved with a GLS extension. Requirements Management Plan document types are saved with an RMP extension. Stakeholder Request document types are saved with an STR extension. Supplemental Requirements Specification document types are saved with an SUP extension. Use case specification document types are saved with a UCS extension, and vision document types are saved with a VIS extension. For many open project, the document types can be viewed by first selecting the project's name in the Explorer. In our case, this would be the New Age Media Portal. Then from the main menu, select File, Properties, and select the Document Types tab. 
Please note, you can add, edit, or delete document types to fit your project, department, or organizational needs. But again, we recommend that you start with the defaults and see if they'll be suitable for you and for your project. A requirements document looks like a normal Microsoft Word document, but in reality it's part of an integrated requirements management project. Rational's Requisite Pro uses the Word functionality to create and modify requirement documents. Each document is associated with a project database which allows Requisite Pro to rapidly update information between documents and requirement views. It's very important to realize we need to protect the integrity of tag requirements when sharing documents. This means you just can't send a document to someone. What you need to do is use RecPro's offline authoring feature. This feature lets users read and modify a requirement document outside of Requisite Pro while preserving the integrity of the tag requirements. When you take a document offline, Requisite Pro creates a copy of the document in the directory you specify. The original is still stored in Requisite Pro, but it's changed to a read-only state. Other users can still view the document in Requisite Pro, but they cannot edit it until you bring it back online. Here on the slide I've shown the tool's response when I try to access a file. In this situation, it tells me that the purchase item document was taken offline by the user admin. When offline, you modify a document in the same manner as you would any other Microsoft Word document. In addition, using the Requisite Pro extensions to Word, you can add and delete requirements in the offline document, and when you bring the document back online, RecPro replaces the read-only document with a modified document. Alternatively, you can elect to cancel the offline process. When you do, Requisite Pro restores the original document, removing its read-only state so all users can again modify it within Requisite Pro. Please note, before taking a document offline, make sure all changes made to the requirement text outside the document, such as the attribute matrix or requisite web, have been saved in the document. And lastly, do not rename documents while they're offline. The original file name is necessary so the offline document is recognized within Requisite Pro. You may need to adjust your Microsoft Word macro security levels to use the Requisite Pro many commands for offline authoring because Word defaults to the highest level for macro security. This setting prevents the enabling of Requisite Pro offline authoring macros. We set the macro security to medium on the security dialog box, which is available in Word by selecting Tools, Macro, and then Security. By default, Word also turns off the bookmarks and hidden text features. On the slide I've shown how the requirement would appear if bookmarks and hidden text were disabled. To enable bookmarks and hidden text in Microsoft Word, click Tools, Options to open the Options dialog box, and from the View tab, select the Bookmarks and Hidden Text checkboxes. On the slide, I've now shown how Word would display the same requirement, but this time you should notice the tag requirement, highlighted in orange, is being fully displayed. So to wrap up this tip on sharing requirements with non-Requisite Pro users, all users do not need to have a copy of Requisite Pro if you just want to make the document available for them to view. You can also allow users to work on a requirement document offline, but remember, you must preserve the integrity of your tag requirements. This means taking the document offline prior to working on it. Using Requisite Web Rational's Requisite Web interface provides a thin client solution to access project documents, requirement information, and data through the web browser. From Requisite Web, you can modify the name, text, and attribute of requirements from views and from documents. You can create and delete requirements and assign new parent requirements from views and from documents. You can also create and modify documents and use offline authoring capabilities, and all changes are automatically tracked just as they would from the Windows client. Requirement authoring through the web allows better support of distributed teams and multiple platform environments. However, a license is required to use Requisite Web. It will use a Requisite Pro floating license, so it isn't free. Feature Comparison On this slide, I provided the feature comparison of Requisite Pro and Requisite Web. Note, at the bottom of the slide, highlighted in red, are the differences in the functionality between the two. I'll give you a moment to take a look at this list. In short, Requisite Web may be delivered to provide the typical end user with the majority of the functionality without the need to deploy the product on the client's machine. Project Overview on this slide, I've launched Requisite Web, and I've accessed my New Age Media Portal project. This interface will show me the same requirement types, requirements, attributes, structure, hierarchy, etc., as when I was using the Requisite Pro Windows client. 